going everyone darren here aka dr dev and welcome to this week's devlog episode it is currently monday evening i've just gotten home from my first day back to work since my holiday and i am itching to get to work on this game i decided to kickstart this week's development by tackling something that has been annoying me since i implemented player movement and that's the slowdown that occurs to the player's movement speed when walking diagonally against other colliders I solved this problem by creating a physics material with a friction value of zero that I then applied to the player's rigid body. It got rid of the problem for the most part but not in its entirety because there was still a minor slowdown due to how my movement script works but you know what it was already a major improvement so I decided that it would do for now. The other thing that I wanted to tackle today was something that I mentioned in last week's video and that is the dynamic draw order of objects based on their Y value. What I mean by that is that I want objects that are lower on the screen to draw in front of objects that are higher on the screen. As you can see here the player always draws on top at the moment and it looks very unrealistic in my opinion. A dynamic draw order will do wonders here as it will give the impression that there is genuine depth to the game as objects move around and appear to be in front of and behind of each other. So I created a script that will handle the draw order sorting and then I got to work on the implementation. Once finished, I attached the script to my player, moved the player and the enemy to the same sorting layer and then loaded up the game to test it out. And it worked brilliantly. So that was another task to knock off the list and already my week was looking good. It's now Tuesday and I wanted to get started on the combat system for the game. However, I thought a bit about how I want player input to be handled and I decided that I would just upgrade to the new Unity input system today instead. Not only is it far more modular and robust than the current input system, but it also involves using events to track input, which is something I've wanted to use for so long. I really hate that the standard way to read input is to check for it in every update call as it's so wasteful and inefficient. So I got started by reading up on the new input systems documentation over on Unity's GitHub repo. And once I was comfortable with how it worked, I got cracking on implementing it in my game. The migration process was actually really seamless. I suspect that a lot of that has to do with how early in my game's development I've migrated though. So I'm glad that I got it out of the way sooner rather than later. Having put the new system in place, it was getting a little late, so I decided not to start on the combat system today. Instead, I thought it would be cool to decouple the player's facing direction from his moving direction. I'm not sure yet if this is something that will end up in the final game, but for now it looked pretty cool and I actually kind of liked it. I feel like it could open up some windows of opportunity for really cool gameplay mechanics in the future. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the description because I'd really love to hear your opinions. Lastly, since I was using the new input system to read the movement and look direction inputs, I thought it would be cool to finish the night off by confirming that the attack input was working correctly. I made it so that when I click my mouse button, a message is printed to the console and that seemed to work perfectly. So I knew that I could immediately get cracking on the combat system tomorrow. Brilliant. So with that done, I decided to call it a day and go grab a bite to eat with my fiance. So it's currently Wednesday evening and that means that it's time to get to work on this combat system. This is something that I've been looking forward to for quite a while now so I'm happy to be finally getting around to starting on it. The first thing that I decided to do was to create a temporary game object parented to the player's hand to represent his held weapon. I say temporary because I plan to redraw the player next week in higher resolution and with a few changes to his appearance as well. So with that in mind there isn't really any point in going all out on the weapon's graphics just yet. I chose to reuse the sprite for the skeleton's arm and scaled it so that it vaguely represented some kind of blade. I then adjusted the weapon's draw order so that it appears to be held in the hand behind the knuckles but in front of the player's other body parts. Then I got a little bit carried away with rotating the player's arm because, let's be real, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know why but it's so damn addictive. The next thing I did was create an attack animation for the player, but since I'll be redrawing his graphics next week, I decided that I'll just keep it very simple for the time being. Basically, I just raise the player's arm up and then swing it back down at a faster rate. You can't go wrong with that. I then rigged it up in the player's animator so that when a certain trigger is fired, the animation will play and then transition back to idle once it completes. And lastly, it was time to hook up the attack input event to the animation script so that it could set the animator trigger. And with that done, I loaded up the game and started clicking my mouse button. And as you can see, my player is responding to the input with his attack animation. Let's go Skelly! I got quite a lot done today, but I have a company offsite event that I have to attend tomorrow for work. So unfortunately, it's time for bed.
Okay, so it is now Friday evening and look, okay, I know that Thursday is supposed to come after Wednesday, but to be completely honest with you guys, I was just so tired yesterday that I decided to take the day off and relax. But that's not to say that I won't get a load of work done on my game today, especially seeing as it's a day that doesn't involve getting up early and driving to work in the morning. So to continue on with my combat system, I created some children game objects for the player and the hedgehog that will represent hitboxes and attack boxes, as you can see here. The capsule colliders at the feet are the ones I created a few weeks ago, which I use for physics interactions with the world but now i've got these hitbox colliders which for the enemy is just a single capsule collider but for the player since his shape is a bit odd is composed of these square and circle colliders and finally then i have the attack box colliders which for the enemy is its snout and for the player is his weapon i then created an attack animation for the hedge dog though really just a very basic one that is definitely temporary just like the player's attack animation as you can see here, it will do two little hops in sequence which act as like a bit of a cue to the player that it's about to attack and then after a brief pause it does a fast lunge forward followed by a slow retreat backwards. You can see here that I added an animation event to the point in the animation where the hedge dog reaches the end of its lunge. It's going to be at this point that collision detection will be run to see if it hit anything so that it can do damage and kill its target once I implement that functionality in the future. As with the player's attack animation, I've linked the enemy's attack animation up in the animator to a trigger, which for the sake of testing, I have temporarily mapped to the spacebar on my keyboard. I will of course at a later point be hooking this up to some sort of enemy AI system, but for now this is grand. Another thing I did was I started the implementation of my combat system script. I wanted this system to be generic and not particularly coupled to any specific character in the game, such as the player. So as you can see here, I only actually have one script called Character Combat, name not finalized, and both the player and the enemy use it for their combat interactions. At the moment, all it really does is exposes some methods that are fired from the animation events of each character's attack animation. When they're invoked, they run some hit detection logic to see if the associated attack box collides with any hitbox that is on a given layer. Then when hits are detected, a message will be printed to the console for the time being, which simply displays information about who attacked who, as you can see here. The last thing I wanted to do, which I thought would finish off this week nicely, was to add a basic hurt animation so that when the enemy is hit, it will show it visually instead of just printing a message. And having finished that, let's see how it looks. Oh yeah. Oh god yeah, that is really satisfying to see. God damn. Like, even though the animations took literally a few minutes to make, it still really makes a huge difference to the overall feel of the game. And seeing as these are just temporary animations, I'm really looking forward to spending the time to make proper ones with facial expression responses included. But alas, this week's devlog has come to an end. I'm very happy with how much I've accomplished this week, especially having taken a day off of the development. Next week, I plan to redraw the character's graphics in a higher resolution and also make some aesthetic alterations to it as well. Then I'll probably spend most of the week working on combat. Perhaps I'll add health bars and make the enemy actually killable. If I have time to, then I'd like to get started on the enemy AI so that he can actually try to kill me instead of just standing there waiting for me to press the space bar. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you are not already a subscriber to my channel, then you should definitely subscribe now and hit the little bell button so that you can stay up to date with my latest devlog episodes. Thanks very much for watching guys and I'll catch you next week.